the relationship that people establish with place is not one in which you are located in place but you express the qualitative unfolding dynamic of place before relationships there is active emplacement the specific set of relationships are held by place this notion of of place has to do with a groundless ground of reality in the sense that there is like absence and emptiness that is something that is creative in much of our thinking in alternative politics is it has to do it, it's full of positivity working with this groundless ground is part of this process of of ecological reparation in the western world we understand this relationship between life and, and death as two opposites but in this context maybe life and death are a continuum so that's, that's a way that i am trying to translate it as negativity but yeah it's not a polaristic way on the uh, understand negativity but it's something more kind of recursive so i think ecological reparation this necessity of cre creative action has to do with this let's say background of metaphysical background of the continuity of this continuity of the life dead continuum so what i found or better what found me the the event that found me was a conjoint action triggered by agroecological and conservation collectives in the Tequendama cloud forest. So they are liberating one site slash place. I think place is a better translation. They, they say territorio. Territorio here means many other things. So this group of people, they are a heterogeneous group of people, a small coffee farmers, neo-rurals meaning the, the the increasing process of migration from the city to the countryside as now i'm part of it and ngo activists and ex expats uh, the, the migration from the global north to the global south of course this effort has many contradictions due to this heterogeneity uh, and like things like gentrification uh, distrustfulness economic structural inequality these things still remain and this is a larger context of structural inequality in colombia that that make that complicate the situation and but at the same time uh, these groups of people uh, stri strive to strive to do make an effort to do things in a way that allows the forest survival this is a special kind of forest because it's one of the rem re last remnants of this uh, cloud forest, which is a forest under permanent cloud formation, which hosts a variety of birds and mammals and other kind of animals. Um, the the mountain, this uh, this region in Colombia was tr highly transformed by the process of um, industrial agriculture and the expansion of uh, ur urban centers. Um, so there is a still this kind of remnants of forests and people in the re in in this place they talk about manchas manchas and manchas is also a way i don't i i there is this word patches but there is no the exact translation My, the, a better translation will be something that we do with painting and you throw away it like patches but patches are like squares but manchas are without uh, a definite definite form so they think about manchas sociales and manchas ecológicas. So yeah, social and ecological patches, and it also is like a like a something that comes from liberating subjectivities or finding way of living from what they call something that is inside your environment and something that is also reflected in what you ended up doing in in in, in for instance in agricultural practices or a specific ways of understanding conservation and this is another point because um, 
this is not a kind of conservation that is a state-based conservation. Uh, so this is something that here we call like estrategias complementarias de conservación, which is like private reserves uh, doing some practices of conservation, but private here doesn't mean exactly absolutely private property because there are, there are, there are, there are circumstances where these spaces uh, become com communal in, 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 through these practices of agroecology, despite the fact that there is an owner of the la finca, of the farm, of the little farm. So um, this is a, a way to keep some context to, to this, the way people is living this ecological reparation. I, I wanted to come back a bit to what you said. and So can you tell us a little bit about agroecology? So what is agroecology in the specific yeah. context? Uh, and then can you tell us how does specifically contribute to uh, the ecological reparation of this specific place? There are some networks across Colombia that... Uh, bring the uh, practice of either organic agriculture or ecological agriculture uh, or traditional agriculture. There is a variety of, of different uh, connections of this network, uh, which usually, on the one hand, came with people that study agriculture or ingeniería agrícola, Right, but they they were skeptical to the results or to what what the industrial agriculture produced, and also the the, the small peasant, see, uh, in the region, a small a small coffee farmers, also from usually like uh, see, uh, 60, 70 years old for the most part, they keep doing traditional practices in traditional in the sense that has more than 100 years like growing coffee under the shadow of trees to to in in order that the coffee has the flavor of the fruits that are around um, so you have these two type, kind of different traditions or, or streams of uh, practices of agricultural practices one is more kind of scientific technological in the terms of agroecology and the other one these practices of the small farmers that has I don't know the 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 how to track the origins in more than what I found there or in the in the in the remote past. I don't know if that is totally indigenous but should be maybe they start uh, doing these practices and this is the meaning of agroecology there like this mixture between these practices. What they have in common is this skepticism friend, uh, in relation to the results of the more industrial way of growing coffee, for instance, monoculture, right? Uh, and they also um, yeah, try to use, for instance, microorganisms that belong just to the soil of this, of this particular place in order to recover the soil. Right, uh, but this is something that is it has to do with scientific technological knowledge of the uh, ingeniero agronomo in dialogue with the what the small small peasant small farmers do. do. So ecological reparation is exp expressed as vitality that is as as becoming an emanation from place. I, were, I was asking, why do you prefer to live here? You can live in other places. Or to the peasants, what makes you still remain in this place despite the fact that it is not easy economically to, re to live here? Sometimes they say it's because of the vitality of this place. And they repeatedly express this connection, for instance, with the lagoon, with, with some bo bodies of water that exist in in this region, they say, I just to be capturado por la laguna. Like, they, there is something that comes from the lagoon to us. Um, so that is expressed as vitality, uh, or is named as vitality. In your work, you have um, taken inspiration uh, from these um, 
um, statement from one of the farmers you've worked with, which is Obedecer a la Vida. Uh, and you talk about this Obedecer a la Vida as um, um, being, you know, a specific form of ethical obligation, of ecological obligation that even is beyond ecology, something else. So maybe could you talk a little bit about what you think Obedecer a la Vida means in this context? Yeah. Uh, so this kind of statements came in in moments where they were saying, "I'm not doing uh, civil resistance. I'm just not doing civil resistance. I'm, I'm estoy obedeciendo la vida, uh, or I'm an environmentalist 24 hours per day, 27, 24. So on the one hand, obeying life." The context of that statement is this asceticism in relation to the state, but at the same time, this way of playing inside the state and outside the state, because you have to take the opportunity, any kind of opportunity, to 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 aim at, at, at giving continuity to these projects, right? If you find an opportunity inside the state or in dialogue with state institutions, you go for it, but. Uh, at the same time, knowing that the, the environment is very tricky, there is a lot of corruption. So you try to, to go in this direction, right? So uh, so that, that that's one thing. The other thing is obeying life in English may sound also very authoritarian. Obedecer, like obeying, like it, it should be something that may, may be read as heteronomic, como una heteronomía, like, et, et, like uh, uh, outside the, uh, the, the property or the capability of the subject. But for them, and this is something that resonates in a way, in a strange way, with things like mandar obedeciendo los zapatistas, I, I put that example, is like, like um, uh, I don't know if that's in an... In, it's not an internalization of the ethical norm, but it's more like your action express this qualitative unfolding of place, right? Where you are, at that moment, you are not uh, an individual subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, for instance, they talk about a lot of, of intuition. Uh, in the in the in what they call like the manejo integral del territorio, like uh, integrity uh, place management. Uh, so it's uh, this intuition has to do with receiving messages from from place. Um, so we may read it as religious, but it's, religious has a very uh, strong tradition of that that meaning. Uh, but it's something that 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 reason for for them also integrates other cap- capacities, yeah. And may, uh, intuition is a, is a, is another capacity because they they think there is this permanent dialogue or converse, conversation with uh, other beings that live in the territory, and do something that you don't see but is present. And and also it's important to stress that I'm not talking about indigenous people, because you know these kind of ideas usually are like in the box of indigenous people, but this is something that you can find in in, in for instance in 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 Roberto Sainz is the, the the person who I work with, and he's a a mestizo national national white mestizo. Uh, a civil, uh, electrical engineer, and uh, I mean, he has these two lives, and he was affected by the encounter with indigenous people along his process of defending or fighting for for the lagoon. 